Good morning, YouTube, BookTube. This is Johnny. Time to make a video. My wife just left to have breakfast with her cousins, and the house is quiet. It is January the 25th. Here in Holland, Michigan, it's 10.06 in the morning. It's gray, damp, rainy, slushy, snowy outside. And yeah, the last couple of days it's been kind of quiet. And my wife got back from Seattle on Wednesday. And um, I've been reading in the mornings as for my morning worship, William Perkins, volume 8. I started reading this morning the second treatise in here, a whole treatise of cases of conscience distinguished in three books. The first whereof is revised and corrected in sundry places and other two annexed taught and delivered by M. W. Perkins in his Holy Day Lectures, carefully examined by his own briefs and now published together for the common good by T. Bickering, Bachelor of Divinity, 1606. Of course, this is a, a Puritan reprint. It's not the original William Perkins in 1606. Also, I've been reading in the mornings the Theoretica Practical Theology Promagama by Petrus van Manstrit, translated by Todd M. Reisner, Restner. This is volume one. This is volume two, Faith in, in the Triune God, Theoretica Practical Theology by Petrus van Manstrit. Yeah, I've been reading on the the unity of God. This is on the faith in the triune God, and so I've been reading that in the mornings up until the afternoons, one o'clock. Of course, I'm always writing in my diary. This is January the 2020. This morning, I'm on page. 86 for the year 2020. What I'm going to do in this uh, video is it's been going around in BookTube World top 10 nonfiction books, and that's a kind of difficult for me to do because I have a ton of, of nonfiction books non-fishing, non-fiction books, but I went down there a couple of days ago and just grabbed 10 that I have read over the years and have reread and have brought up here from the lower level to look at and to read and for, look things up. I'm just going to show them. They're not in a particular order of my top favorites or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm just going to start at the top and go down. <clears throat> I still got congestion. I don't know what this is. I have this cough and I'm always, all this gook is coming up all the time. I don't know what it is. So forgive me if I cough. I also notice as I've gotten older that I get a lot of saliva <laughs> and I noticed that maybe it's part of getting older that your reflexes to swallow slow down so if I choke or cough please forgive me anyway let's go the these now I have I can't say the, these are the ones I just grabbed the ones that uh, kind of represent my spiritual and intellectual life. Things that I have read that have had an impact on me or been a part of my life as a Christian, as a thinking kind of old man, hermit, Christian bookworm. This is the first book 
This is Anti-Intellectualism in American Life by Richard Hofstetter. This book uh, I really highly recommend. It helped me understand, for example, when I was in, involved in church, why there was so much anti-intellectualism among Christians. <laughs> not only Christians, but just secular America. It's really a good book. I highly recommend it. Winner of the 1964 Pulitzer Prize nonfiction. Uh, this book had a really impact on me. This is another book, The Varieties of Psychedelic Experience, The First Comprehensive Guide to the Effects of LSD on Human Personality by R. E. L. L. Masters and Gene Houston. I had now. I bought this book. It's kind of interesting. Many many years ago, when I was in my early twenties, I was going to a small liberal arts Christian college here in Michigan on Mackinac Island, and they had a little tiny bookstore. And as you all know, when I was in high school, especially twelfth grade, early twenties. I took a lot of psychedelics, LSD, mushrooms, muscaline, all kinds of psychedelic drugs. I did that by myself. I would go off in the woods or I would just go off to the beach, Pacific Ocean. I lived in the San Francisco Bay Area. And I would just go and get drop acid and just sit by a river or the ocean or just wander around in my own head and I <laughs> I was into the the doors of perception you know higher consciousness and things like that but I first came across this book when I was in Bible college not Bible college it was a liberal arts Christian college and they had this book in their bookstore and I just bought it I thought it was kind of strange and then I lost it I lost this book but then when we were living in Houston Texas and I was doing my internship, there was a library, a public library, just a block from where we lived. And I would walk up there all the time and check books out of the library. And they had a little tiny little, I don't know what you call it, you know, a little rack on wheels. And they, were, they used to sell old records and books. And this book was there. And I, because I had lost my copy over the years, and then I found, so I found this used copy when I was doing my ministerial internship in Houston, Texas, back in the early 80s. So, and then a book that uh, is Mysticism, A Study in Nature and Development of Man's Spiritual Consciousness by Evelyn Underhill. I look at this book all the time. If you want to know uh, the nature and development of man's spiritual consciousness, mysticism. This is a classic by Evelyn Underhill. You'll come across it all the time if you're into Christian spirituality, the history of Christian mysticism. This is a primary text. I highly recommend it. And then this is one of my favorite books, uh, The True and Only Heaven, Progress and Its Critics by Christopher Leach. He wrote another famous book that's called The Culture of Narcissism. This I'm, I, it's kind of book I pick up and I bring it upstairs and I read it for a while and then I take it downstairs and I'm always just, it's just a book that I like to reread and ponder and at certain times, so I highly recommend this book. The True and Only Heaven, Progress and Its Critics. This is a book that was given to me when I was doing my ministerial internship in Houston, Texas back in the 80s. There was a fellow in there. He was, uh, he was into investment and finances, but he was into philosophy. He loved philosophy. And he wanted to become a, a minister. But one, one time he invited us over to their house for dinner and this guy had every single philosophy book that I could you could ever the house was just filled with every philosophical book there was but he said to me pick any book there that you want 
And I looked around, and this is the book that I took, No Place of Grace, Anti-Modernism and the Transformation of American Culture from 1880 to 1920 by Jackson Lears. I have several other books now by Jackson Lears, but this book is, I can, it's just one of my favorite, it's another book that I bring up all the time, and I'll just read a chapter or read a couple of pages, and it's referred to a lot. You'll come across it. I come across it in a lot of footnotes over the years. It's another favorite nonfiction book that I reread that I highly recommend, especially to understand American culture even today, right in the 2020s, is The Feminization of American Culture by Ann Douglas. I have shown this book in previous videos but I highly recommend this book, The Feminization of American Culture, especially the chapter, The Loss of Theology, and then the chapter on uh, the Fenneman, the Fenneman, Fenneman, Fenneman? I can't, yeah, Feminist and Feminine Disestablishment. Uh, it has Herman Melville, The Revolt Against the Reader, it's just, a, it's just an incredible book. I highly recommend this book. Ann Douglas, The Feminization of American Culture. Then, uh, as you all know, I love American history. I, I think that as Americans, we should know the history of our country. And as Christians, we should know the history of Christianity in America. Not only in America, but throughout the world. But this is one of my favorite uh, American history books, and it's called. It's also about religious history in America, not just Protestantism, but all aspects of religion. Well, I don't know if it's. It's probably Protestantism. Anyway, religious history of American life by Sidney Anstrom. I've re I've read this book. I don't know how many times over the years. It was a textbook and Bible college and seminary. And then this is a book that as far as my own spirituality that is ha, I really I read many many years ago and have read read have reread it many times Religious Affections by Jonathan Edwards. Uh, this is one of my favorite all-time books. And then this is another book, and when I was coming into Calvinism and the Reformed faith back in, I don't know, the 1976, 77, 70, probably 1976, 77, I bought this book, The Doctrine of God by Herman Babbick. I now have his Reformed Dogmatics, four volumes. I have he has a revival and his works are being reprinted and translated out of the Dutch. But this was a, a book that, it was also a book I, for a class I had in seminary in the Doctrine of God with uh, Dr. Sproul who has passed away. But highly recommend The Doctrine of God by Herman Bavick. And then lastly, this is a book, uh, I, I highly recommend all of Paul Johnson's books, but this is his book. The History of Christianity by Paul Johnson. If you want a good overview of the history of Christianity, uh, this is really a good starting point. So, A History of Christianity by Paul Johnson, A Religious History of American People by Sidney Anstrom, The Doctrine of God by Herman Babbick. I recommend all of as I've always said, there's a lot of Reformed dogmatics, Reformed theology that you can go out and buy if you want to get into Reformed theology. But I highly recommend the writings of Herman Babbick, especially his four volumes on dogmatics. Uh, I highly recommend. I highly recommend Religious Affections. Anything, you can get the works of Jonathan Edwards. This is Religious Affections, his treatise on Religious Affections. Highly recommend The Feminization of American Culture by Ann Douglas. No Place of Grace, 
Anti-Modernism and the Transformation of American Culture from 1880 to 1920 by Jackson Lear. Uh, the True and Only Heaven, Progress and Its Critics by Christopher Lish. Really recommend his, all his writings. Also his Culture of Narcissism. Mysticism, A Study in the Nature and Development of Man's Spiritual Consciousness by Evelyn Underhill. This is a great book. It's, it's the kind of book you can just reread, reread, read, ponder, meditate, give you a guide, direction to other spiritual writings by spiritual men and women, mystics. Varieties of Psychedelic Experience, the First Comprehensive Guide to the Effects of LSD on Human Personality. Anti-Intellectualism in American Life by Richard Hofstetter. So those are some of my favorite nonfiction books that I thought I'd share. I could share, <laughs> I mainly read nonfiction, especially Christian nonfiction, but I like history, I like art, music, poetry, memoirs, essays, literary studies, criticism, cultural history, this goes on and on. But these are the ones I often take up from the lower level and look at over the last years of, you know, practically, you know, off and on. So yeah, that's what's going on here in my book life. Um, my wife has been back and we've been getting back, reacquainting ourselves after being separated for a week. And yeah, so I hope you're having a good week. I, this is Saturday. Friday Reads, uh, I didn't do Friday Reads. I might do a video tomorrow. My wife goes to church. I might do a video about what I've been reading. I got tons of used books. My wife brought home from Seattle on her trip some used books that she got for me. And I got books in the mail that have come in the mail. It's just, I got, I, I was at the book nook yesterday at volunteering. I brought home books. So I might show those in a future video. So anyway, thank you for the comments. Thank you for the new subscribers. I always like interaction with those who watch my videos and, and, so I hope you're all doing well and having a good weekend. And until next time, bye.